Hey folks, this is JW. It's Tommy. Yeah, where we're headed out. It's January 28th. Going on our trap line. I'm setting snares today and Tommy is going to be setting the footholds. Um, so he wants to go ahead and show you his setup here in the back of the truck. So we'll let him chat a little bit. Alrighty, so what what's you that, basically need... What's that toilet paper for? I'll show you later. Okay. The uh, Your basic setup here. Got our trapper's bag by Leggett's or if you don't have that you can always just use a five gallon bucket but I prefer the bag. Something to carry your equipment in huh? Unscented gloves only used for handling your traps and trapping equipment do not use anything else for scent, scent reasons. You have your as I grew up calling them your yo-ho or your little little shovel little spade for digging out your set hole. Digging your holes. Mm -hmm. Heavy hammer this one I think is a three pound pounding your stakes and uh, this is a something I had here is just for making your hole maker hole. <laughs> that's for when it's a, that's for when the ground's a little, a little harder a little hard yeah. it's frozen your sifter for sifting through your dirt to cover your trap you need one of these 100% and then uh, last but not least Leggett's K9 exciter We've got thousands and thousands of foxes on that stuff. That's not over exaggerating. That's 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 a fact. Always uh, carry a 11, 30 seconds just for adjusting the pans and stuff on your traps. It's handy to have in your bag. Uh, we're setting one and three quarter sleepy creeks, and uh, got some DPs in here just for some coons set up. If we see a good spot. What's in that thing? Uh, this here. It's got good old sphagnum peat moss for whenever your uh, sets are going to freeze. You just, I just like to put peat moss in there instead of dirt so it doesn't freeze. Well, that's what we do. We, a, when we clean the hole out, we just... A little technique to it, too. I'll show you here in a little bit. We throw the, I think, well, I do. I, I throw the dirt away and just use 100% peat moss around the I, track. I, it, depending on the temperature, I may sprinkle some dirt on top to make it blend. I but. think it's dependent on it now, though. <laughs> got some stakes in there? Yep, we got uh, rebar here, cut at 24 inches and 18 inches with uh, washers welded to the heads for our stakes. Always drive them in, cross pattern. Scissors? Like this. Yeah. So that whenever they pull either direction, you always got one on the other way, they can't pull it straight out. Never set a trap with one stake. That's a mistake, that's a rookie mistake you make there. Well, it used to be, um, before the coyotes were so prevalent here, I used to only use one one stake for foxes and that was sufficient but you always want to set for the biggest thing you could possibly catch yep so if you got coyotes in the area you set for a coyote that's right we'll uh <laughs> we'll hit back with you here when we get set up all right do it going to be setting a uh, one and three quarter Sleepy Creek. The uh, reason I'm setting in this location is you have the, uh, the farm road here and then you have a old clearing right here and there's an old fence line right here running uh, parallel to the old clearing and they like to run up through here and then hit the road and head out. So I'm going to be setting my set right here with my hole, uh, the back of the hole facing the road that way. They, either way they walk they can still see it kind of so we're gonna get going here I'm gonna use this this here clump of grass for my backing Oh, 
Put our 18 inch rebar in here. Four. That went in surprisingly easy. So that's good. I'm gonna take my hole puncher here, punch back in a little bit. Twist it. There you go. How deep is that? Huh? How deep your hole go? Uh, about that far. Three or four inches? Yeah. Nothing crazy. Like that makes sure our dog's cleaned off, doesn't have any wax on it so the pan doesn't slip. Set the pan. Take our TP we were talking about earlier, put it over the pan so don't get no dirt underneath. I'm gonna take some uh, peat moss. I'm going to put it on there like that, then I'm going to take it and I'll put it around the edges first. This is for when it's cold. And uh, I'm going to take it, we're going to tap it down. Careful not to touch the pan because it will go off on your hand. Again? Again. <laughs> I'm going to take it, I'm just going to cover the rest why, of my trap. Why do you pat that down on the edges? Uh, that way it's solid and when they step on it, it doesn't be spongy and they won't want to step on it. So I'm going to take my Yoho here and come down here. Make a little... What are you doing that for? Makes a little step down. So that whenever they... Are you looking for the pan too? Yep. Now you see where the step down is, it comes in here and right here is the pan has a little gully in it. So I'm gonna take just a wee bit of this just to blend it. But not enough to freeze, right? Right. Then I'll take all the loose dirt off of this. Oh, take this and split it. Run this down. Each side? Each side. Down to my levers. What do you mean your levers? What do you mean your levers? The uh, things you use to set the pan. So on each side of the trap right here. Why do you take that down to the lever for? Now the way the foxes or coyotes whenever they come. Right now I'm setting for a coyote about nine inches back to the center of my pan. Uh, you want this back here so they cross right over your pan. Take some leggets, K9 exciter number one, squirt down in there. Load up. There's a the finished product. That's how you set a fox or coyote set. That's how you set. That's how I set for a fox and coyote set. Looks good to me. Yep.
you found a trail call. Yep. Going right through here. Got a snare set up now. I think you found a pretty good spot. How many have you set to? Yeah. All right. Okay, what we've got here is a lot of noise because we're beside a, a highway. And uh, we've got an overgrown field back here behind it. And in front of us, we've got a real thick thicket. I mean, it's a probably a thousand yards long and uh, 500 yards, 400, 500 yards wide. And this is the beginning of it. And we've got a trail right here where I stuck a snare. And I, I've got it blocked down. Uh, you know, fairly good, and I tried to do that a little inconspicuous for a coyote. Get over here on this side. I've got another trail going back along the fence. And I stuck a, a snare right here. went ahead and I, I propped this pole up against that tree and, and wired it to that tree so it would be high enough for a coyote to go through an underneath of it. And uh, I've got a, an extension cable onto my snare all the way back to the base of that tree. So you got to always make sure that you anchor them all solid. So we'll come back in the morning and see uh, many things come through here now on all these here we've got deer breakaways in case they would happen to get their foot in they can uh, break it off uh, away and get loose of course this one underneath the here you're not gonna catch a deer going underneath of that pole Tommy's setting his second set So within the next 10 days, he ought to be able to catch something. Almost heaven, West Virginia. Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River Life is old there, older than the trees Younger than the mountains, blowing in the breeze Country roads take me home to the place I belong, West Virginia